God's been good to us. Amen. He brought us through uh, the many challenges of life that's in life. And, uh, and so we come this morning to praise him, to thank him, to recognize who he is and what he has done in the past, the present, and also the future. So we can thank him for everything. He, told, he tells us that we should um, uh, fail not to assemble ourselves together. Uh, and that's for a reason. That's, that's a, a relationship uh, with uh, the saints. And uh, as we come uh, together with the saints, we can uh, praise him, and worship him in spirit and truth. So, so that's the reason he tell, tells us to um, to come, fail not to assemble ourselves. So we we have been obedient to his word. So we're here this morning to uh, praise him, to honor him, and to worship him in spirit and in truth. So we're going to praise him this morning. We're going to uh, thank him. We're going to uh, open up our service today, worship service today, by singing. Um, Glory, glory, hallelujah. Amen. 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 And praise him through song. Glory, glory. to 
recognize that you have provided us with breath to breathe. Recognizing that you have given us food to eat. Recognizing that you have given us shelter that we could be comforted. And we uh, recognize that you have provided us with a family, a household. Yes, Lord. And we recognize that you are our, our God, you are our refuge, and yes. you, you are our provider, and you are our protector, and that you are our strength and our time lead. So Lord, we know that uh, we need you for now. Yes. We need you, Lord, to, to uh, uh, we need your continuous blessing because, Lord, uh, we know that we uh, uh, are, are not what we ought to be, but we are striving to be what you want us to be. Amen. And we just ask, Lord, that you continue to bless us as we continue this uh, teaching journey. Yes, Lord. And then, Lord, uh, uh, we come uh, asking uh, special blessings upon the widows, the orphans, the destitutes, and those who do not have a place that they can call their own. Yes, Lord. And we pray, Lord, for the sick and the shut in. Uh, we ask that your comfort, you comfort them, and, and, and you uh, continue your mercy and your grace to them. And we ask, Lord, that you would uh, allow them to touch the hem of your garment, that they might be whole again. Yes. And then, Lord, uh, as we uh, uh, continue our service today, we, we uh, would uh, want you to bless the, the morning service throughout <coughs> the day. Would you, we pray that you bless our Sunday school session, which you have. And uh, we ask that you bless the, uh, the 11 o'clock service. Yes. And, and uh, that we will continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. And then, Lord, that we, we um, pray always, continually, that you would bless our, our pastor and uh, uh, continue to on his head with wisdom and knowledge and yes, understanding Lord. that he will continue to, to uh, lead his people. Yes, and then we ask that you continue to bless our pastor and murders, our evangelists, our office members and friends. And then Lord, uh, we always ask that you would uh, bless our young folks wherever they might be because Lord, we know that they are in uh, Places that they should or should not be. Put a hedge of protection around them, yes. Lord, and keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger. Yes. And we ask that you would bless them that they will not yield to temptation. Yes. And again, Lord, we ask that you would bless the, uh, the teach word today. Uh, bless uh, 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 the teacher, the preacher. Uh, and we ask that you would bless the hearers. Yeah. Bless, bless us that we will hear what uh, the word is to come today for us. Yeah. Give us ears to hear yeah. and a mind to glorify you, Lord. That we might take this word and not hide it in our, yeah. our, in our uh, hearts, but to receive it in our hearts. And then <laughs> that we will go out and take the word into the pages, highways and highways. To tell sin and men, boys and girls, what they should do to be safe. Yeah. Because you said in your word that you, your desire is that no one would be lost. Yeah. So we just want to continue to focus upon the highest calling, which is in Christ Jesus, that we might be that ambassador to tell somebody about Christ. Uh, this is my prayer for Christ's sake, in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Amen.
participating in the devotional period. We're going to uh, move forward in our worship service. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, worship the Lord in giving. Amen. 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 So will, will the ushers uh, come forward? Ushers? Praise the Lord, new life. Praise the Lord, new life. Praise the Lord, new life. God is good, y'all. Oh, God is. is. And God is. Now, some people can put, God is my healer. Mm -hmm. Some can say, God can say, God is my healer, God is my strength. Praise the Lord. But God is on everything. Amen. 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 Amen.
great day. Yes. Amen. 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 Give God some praise in this place. Amen. It keeps your everything. Amen. Amen. See, I don't know about you, but he woke me up this morning in my right frame of mind. Yeah, I had food in the refrigerator, a roof over my head, and clothes to oh put on my back. Yeah. He is my yeah. everything. Yeah. When I was suffering with cancer, he's the one that healed my body. Yeah. He is my everything. Okay. When I needed a way out of no way, he made a way for me. Yeah. He is my everything. Yeah. Give God some praise in this place. Yeah. And before we get into the Word of God this morning, there's a couple things I want to address real quick. And the first thing is, let me see here, I got the check marks. First, I want to talk about the Thanksgiving baskets. Amen. We're taking uh, the donations as we speak uh, from here all the way up to November 12th. Amen. And we're hoping to collect enough Parishes, turkeys, donations um, to do 20 Thanksgiving baskets. Amen. 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 So I'm asking um, everyone here and everyone who's listening, if you can, let's give. This is, we always say this is a season of giving and things of that nature, but we should give every, Amen. every time, every, any time it presents an opportunity for us to give, we should Amen. give. Amen. 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 Because Jesus said the poor will always be among us. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. And also, uh, I'm going to have my sister stand up, uh, Sister Yvette uh, Bernal, to talk about the Haitian Children's Drive, Clothes Drive. So we are um, uh, picking up slightly used um, children's clothing sizes 24 and up for the Haitian refugees who are in El Paso at this time. <coughs> and I'll be going over and taking those every week. There are some people that I work with through Las Cruces Public Schools and they're gathering clothes, and so I will take those clothes over every week from now until, I believe, November 14th. Uh, so if you have anything, if you know of anyone that has anything, if you can bring it to the church, it'll be distributed um, next Saturday, and then the Saturday after next, up until the 14th of November. Amen. 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 Thank you, sister. Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm going to do this today, but we're going to do it again next week. Hopefully, uh, Evangelist Dr. Dottie Ford can join us next week. But I want to say happy anniversary. <laughs> Amen. It was just October 16th to Pastor Emeritus Andrew Carnegie Ford Jr. That's him. <laughs> <laughs> and Evangelist Dr. Dottie Ford. Amen. She's not here. She's not here today. You know she's serving with the arthritis in the hip and everything. So hopefully she'll be here next week. But we're going to say happy anniversary today. But we're also going to say happy anniversary next week. Amen. 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 Go ahead and lead us out. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Amen. Amen. 61. 61 years. Amen. Amen. 61 years. And that's uh, that's a lot of time, y'all. That's, that's a lot of time, y'all. And let me say, a marriage that lasts that long, you know Jesus Christ is the center of the end. Amen. Amen. He's the focal. Amen. 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 There's a card going around for anyone who wants to sign it. Okay. Um, so uh, we will uh, talk about that. We will go... Uh, Hopefully, uh, mother, I call her mother because she's like a mother figure to me. I'm going to swore to be here next week so we can do this all again in the same tone and get the little uh, thing that uh, the secretary is called for. Um, we have some birthdays. We have quite a few birthdays this month, and we don't have one until this coming Sunday. Amen. But we have one that has passed, and our brother Keith Hill. Amen. Would you tell me, Brother Hill, you, you turned, what, 25? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> 53. 53. 53. Amen. 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 Which means you're three years younger than me. Amen. 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 So if everybody want to stand, we're going to sing happy birthday to our brother Keith Hill. Amen. <laughs> All right. Amen. You know, happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, brother Hill. Happy birthday. Amen. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. Amen. 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 We're going to do what? Praise God. Amen. 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 Now, I want to bring a word. God gave me a word to bring this morning. And we're studying from the book of Daniel. We have studied from the book of Daniel. We're studying uh, the book of Revelation uh, every Wednesday now. We're up to chapter 10. Amen. And some people think that this is just the book, the, the Bible is a fairy tale. There's no truth in it. But I want to say this morning that it is the word of God. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. These are the words from our Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. That He left us to read. Amen. And not only to read it, but to get inside of us so we can live the life He has called us to live. Amen. Amen. And I say that to say that we need to take whatever He says in these 66 books, mm -hmm. we need to take it as the gospel, so to speak. Amen. We need to take it as truth. Amen. Because there's so many people out there lost that will not believe in this book. But it is the word of God. And for those who don't believe, there's a terrible day coming. A terrible day coming. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. So if you will, turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. I'm going to start reading from verse 19. Luke chapter 16. And I'm going to be reading verses 19 through 31. Amen. And also let me say this before we get into the word. Keep Sister Mary filled and lifted up in your prayers. Amen. Uh, she went to the hospital on Thursday. Yeah. She had to stay overnight because she was having some problems, some issues. But she's at home safely now. <coughs> feeling well. Amen. 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 But also the Parkers wanted me to uh, let everybody know who know the Parkers to, the, the, that they send their love. Amen. 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 So if you can, stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. amen. If you dare say amen. amen. And it reads from chapter, Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. It says, there was a certain man, a certain rich man, I should say, which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared substitutiously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Then it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, mm -hmm. being in torments, seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father, Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Mm -hmm. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Mm -hmm. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Mm -hmm. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Mm -hmm. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Let them hear them. Mm -hmm. And he says, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, mm -hmm. neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. You may be seated. Amen. Well, oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, to heaven, hallowed be your most beautiful name. Father, we just pray that you open our 
minds, body, and soul to the wondrous ways of your law, and that you bless us with the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word. Yeah. In Jesus' name, we lift this prayer to you. Amen. 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 Now, I'd like to preach on the thought, or the topic, an interview from hell. An interview from hell. And this is not a popular topic that is preached. Amen, somebody. Amen. But please hear me when I say, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Amen. you are lost and you're headed to hell. Amen. And that is bad news. Amen. It is of no use for me to try and sugarcoat this issue because the scriptures are very clear in regards to hell. But the good news is this. You can turn your life around. Yes. Because God so loved the world yes. that he gave his only begotten son. Yes. And he gave his life for the lost, the sinners. And if you come to faith in him, you shall not perish, yes. but have everlasting life. Yes. And your destination will not be hell. Now, the very mention of hell elicits many different reactions. Some people react with concern and are moved to share Jesus Christ with the lost around them. Others react with fear and come to Jesus seeking salvation for their own souls. Still, others react with hate and disgust and say that it is not a proper topic for conversation. Uh -huh. Some would even seek to deny the existence of hell. Uh -huh. Yet God and Jesus declared hell to be a very real place. Yeah. Uh -huh. For Psalms chapter 9 verse 17 says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Uh -huh. Out of 162 references to hell in the New Testament 70 of those come from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ himself. Uh -huh. So in other words, Jesus talked about hell more than anybody else. Uh -huh. So if this is an important topic to Jesus, it should be an important topic to us. Uh -huh. Just the very thought that Jesus talked about hell 70 times means hell is a real place. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And some people will dispute and deny the doctrine of hell, and there are three basic approaches that, that they use. They, first, they try to rationalize it and say there is no God, therefore there can be no hell. Mm -hmm. Charles Darwin once said, this is a damnable doctrine. But I say let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. Second, they ridicule it and say there may be a God, but it is silly to speculate about millions of disembodied spirits flying in a lake of fire somewhere. Mm -hmm. Or, this is the 21st century, so wake up. Mm -hmm. Robert Ebersole said the ideal of hell was born out of revenge and brutality on the one side mm -hmm. and cowardice on the other. Mm -hmm. And I have no respect for any man who preaches it, I dislike it, the doctrine, I hate it, I despise it, I defy this doctrine. But once again, I say, let God be true. Amen. Third, they try to use religion and say, there is a God, but he is a God of love, and therefore he would not and could not send anyone to hell. This is the position of the cults and a liberal mindset. Hmm. Christian science says hell is an error of the mortal mind. The Jehovah Witnesses say the wicked will be annihilated. The Mormons say all will eventually be saved and not suffer eternal punishment. The Seventh-day Adventists say God will someday blot out all sin and sinners and establish a clean universe once again. Man may try to use religion as a soapbox to preach that hell is a myth, but I say again, let God be true and every man a liar. Right. Say amen if you hear me. Yeah. If God said it, you better believe it. Yeah. You see, we may not think 
we may not like to think about it, but hell is a reality. Yes. If the teaching in the Bible concerning hell are a myth, then we have no real need for this church, Amen. this Bible, Amen. any preachers, or any of the things we do. Amen. If there is no hell, then there is no heaven, and there is no hell, uh, there is no Savior, right. which means that this is all just a fairy tale. Right. Allow me to say that this story is not a parable. Say it now. The rich man who is spoken about in this passage is still in hell today. Amen. And millions more have and will join him there. Mm -hmm. Today I would like to call the rich man up from hell, y'all. Right, and interview him ab about hell. Okay. I want him to tell us about what hell is really like. Mm -hmm. And if we were possible, if it were possible for him to stand here today, mm -hmm. what kind of man would he be? Mm -hmm. And there are several traits. And let me say this here. There's people, you can go to YouTube, you can read in books how people say they've been to heaven, saw Jesus. You read how people say they went to hell, Jesus showed them hell and all these things. Mm -hmm. But let me say, you ain't got to read those things. Mm -hmm. Go straight here to Luke chapter yeah. 16. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is coming from God himself, mm -hmm. right now. not man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hell is a reality. Hell is a real place. Yes. Yes. Yes, now, there are several traits that would distinguish the rich man and these traits would help us to understand what hell is all about and that it is a real place. And the first thing we see in this text regarding this rich man, that he is, con he is a conscious man. Right. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Right. When we meet this rich man, he is alive in this world. Yes, For it is. says in verse 19, mm -hmm. there was a certain rich man uh -huh. which was clothed in purple and fine linen, yeah. which means that, that backs up that he was a rich man. And fairly subtitiously every day, every day, every day, mm -hmm. which means and which tells us he was alive. Yeah, and after he experienced death and is buried in verse 22, we see him in hell. Mm -hmm. But he's not dead. He is very much alive Amen. in hell. Mm -hmm. So he is a conscious man and he is very aware of his surroundings. Notice what means what the rich man is alive to in him. Mm -hmm. In verse 23, he is conscious and seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The rich man looks at his surrounding, for it says, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. Right. And in hell he lifted up his eyes. Right. Being in torments, and that's poor, mm -hmm. and sees Abraham afar off mm -hmm. and Lazarus in his bosom. Mm -hmm. Now, this passage is very clear. And this is a real man in a real place experiencing real torments. Mm -hmm. This is a literal man in a literal body in a literal place called hell. Mm -hmm. And in verse 25, he is conscious in hearing. Mm -hmm. For it says, but Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime mm -hmm. receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Mm -hmm. Now this rich man is probably hearing the screams of millions mm -hmm. of parched throats. For Matthew chapter 13, verse 42 says, And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. This tells us not only is he hearing Abraham, but he, he, he's hearing fellow sufferers as well, mm -hmm. who are moaning, crying, cursing, and screaming. All right. And this rich man is conscious and feeling. Mm -hmm. For it says in verse 24, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, mm -hmm. have mercy on me. Mm -hmm. And said, Lazarus, mm -hmm. that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Mm -hmm. This passage, like no other in the Bible, illustrates for us pain and suffering that exists in hell. Right. You see, hell is not a state of mind. Come on, somebody. Hell is not a state of mind. It is a real place where real souls 
spend an eternity Amen. in real torment because the word of God says hell is a place of punishment. Yes. Hell is a place of unquenchable fire. Mm -hmm. Hell is a place of unquenched thirst. Mm -hmm. Hell is a place of misery and pain. Mm -hmm. Hell is a place of undiluted mm -hmm. wrath. Mm -hmm. For in the Old Testament, we hear the prophet Habakkuk mm -hmm. cry out for the Lord to remember mercy mm -hmm. during the time mm -hmm. when his wrath was being poured out. Mm -hmm. And that's according to Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Now, this has always been God's way. When he destroyed the earth in Genesis chapter 6 through chapter 8, it was due to sin and unbelief. Amen. But he extended grace to Noah and Noah's family. Amen. And why? Because of their faith. Amen. You see, you cannot expect to go to heaven unless you first put your faith in the one who can get you to heaven. Amen. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. And let me say, even in the day of Noah, God remembered mercy and even placed his rainbow in the clouds to declare his mercy. Mm -hmm. And after the world rejected him, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die for the sins of those who hated him. Amen. My brothers and sisters, there is no clear picture. There is no better example of mercy than this. God sent in his only begotten son to die for sins that he did not commit. Amen. You see, the Lamb of God died in our, your place and in my place on the cross. Mm -hmm. And as he did, he demonstrated mm -hmm. in perfection, I should say, the love of God mm -hmm. for sinners. Amen. And it don't get no better than that. Amen. And let me say, hell is a place of terrible frustration and anger. Hell is a place of eternal separation from God. Hell is a place of eternal separation from all that is good and right. All right then. And some say we are living in hell right now. Mm -hmm. But let me say, it might get bad here, <laughs> but it's far more worse down there. Amen. 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 Some declare that what the Bible says about hell is purely symbolic. But to those of you who are lost, right. you better hope not. Hmm. When the Bible uses symbolic language, it does so to describe things that are indescribable hmm. to our human minds. Right. In other words, the reality is far more intense than the symbolic. Mm -hmm. If what the Bible says about hell is symbolic, then hell is far more worse than even what the Bible says it is. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. However, the Bible used very clear and plain language where hell is concerned. Mm -hmm. And in verse 25, this rich man is conscious in his memory. Mm -hmm. This rich poor man, I call him poor, but we call him a poor man now because he's sitting in hell right now. Right. This poor rich man remembers every person who ever came to his gate. Mm -hmm. Remember, he called Lazarus by his name. Yes, he, he remembers Lazarus lying there, warming his crumbs from his sake. Mm -hmm. He remembers turning a deaf ear to the pain and needs of Lazarus. All right. This rich man would not help Lazarus, mm -hmm. but we see in scriptures that the dogs did by licking Lazarus' souls. Mm -hmm. A dog, dogs care more for this man than, La than the rich man did. All right. All right. And he remembers all the opportunities he wasted during life. Mm -hmm. He remembers that he could have he could have been saved. Mm -hmm. He remembers that he could have lived for the Lord. Mm -hmm. He remembers in glaring details the truth that things did not turn out the way right. he wanted them to. Right. He remembers all his chances and he realizes <laughs> that they are gone now forever. Mm -hmm. He was probably thinking, I should have, could have, would have. <laughs> But it's too late. All right. mm -hmm. And let me say, hell is a place of memory and remorse. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, when you go to hell, you ain't dead. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be able to look at everything mm -hmm. that you should have done or could have done or would have done. Right. Mm -hmm. You're going to look at the things, you're going to look at how you should have came faith in Jesus Christ. All right. Mm -hmm. See, God loves us so much, he gave us a way out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is confess with our mouth and know in our total being that Jesus died for us and God raised him from the dead. It don't get no easier than that, y'all. 
But if, if you're blinded by your riches, if you're blinded by worldly things, you cannot see Jesus because of those trees of the world. And I say, if your memories, if you think your memories, guilt, and remorse are bad here, just imagine what they must be like in hell. You're sitting there constantly saying, man, I wish I would have. Man, I wish I would have had a relationship with Jesus, but it's going to be too late. But let me say, the good news is this. Unlike this rich man, you still have time, and I like to say right now. If there's breath in your body to come to faith in Jesus Christ, you still have this opportunity today because when you arrive in hell, it will forever be too late. Yes, because mama, yes. daddy, big mama and them, yes. nana and them, all of them will not, able, will not be able to pray you out of hell. Yes, right. Amen. And in verse 24, this rich man is conscious and tastes. The rich man desires water. Another fact to show that he's alive. And apparently those lost to hell will still have many of the same wants and desires they had in this world. Amen. And you might wonder what all this proves. Mm -hmm. Well, it proves that this man is not dead, but that he is alive even in hell. Mm -hmm. I mean, even in hell, I should say. Mm -hmm. But hell is not the end. All right. mm -hmm. Just like Lazarus is in Abraham's bosom and will one day be with the be it up in heaven, the same with this rich man who's in hell waiting for his final sentence, his second death, to the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Y'all right. get that? Y'all did that go over y'all head? Right. Okay, y'all got it. All right. So, like I said, hell is not the end. Mm -hmm. It is merely the beginning of an endless eternity where the lost experience a living death forever. All right, All right now. So don't let the world, liberal religion, or the devil tell you that hell is a figment of some preacher's imagination. Mm -hmm. It is a real place where real people go. Yes. So he is a conscious man. And the second trait we see is he is a concerned man. Mm -hmm. This man is suddenly concerned about some things that probably never crossed his mind while he was alive. All right. mm -hmm. Now these things might have briefly crossed his radar from time to time, but he is not concerned enough about any of them to do anything about them. Right. He is concerned about life after death. He may not have ever given eternity a single thought when, while he was alive, living in his mansion mm -hmm. and enjoying his way. Okay. Now he is very conscious he is very concerned right. about the fact of life after death. Mm -hmm. We need to understand this one thing. All right. We are alive today. We will die someday. Mm -hmm. And after we die, our soul will continue to live forever in either heaven or hell. All right, now. <laughs> For Hebrews chapter 9, okay. verse 27 says, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. That's it. And this is why if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need to come to the Lord Amen. while he is still Amen. giving you grace Amen. to do so. Amen. This man probably never gave his simple condi condition any thought at all. He lived like he wanted to live and enjoy himself to the fullest. Mm -hmm. Now he is dead and in hell, yeah. and there's a noticeable change in his attitude. Mm -hmm. He cries out to Abraham in verse 24. And we know Abraham to be what? The father of faith. Mm -hmm. And he calls him father. And it seems that he is interested now mm -hmm. in burning in hell mm -hmm. and making some changes mm -hmm. in his life but it is too late. The thoughts of repentance and of dealing with your sins might not ever enter your mind as often as well. Mm -hmm. All right now. But I just want to remind you that there will come a day 
when it will be too late for you to get right with the Lord. Amen. Amen. There will come a day when you will leave this world. And how you stand on that day is how you will enter Amen. eternity. Amen. Jesus made the issue of repentance very clear, y'all. Right. Mm -hmm. I tell you, mm. nay, but except ye repent, all right. ye shall all likewise perish. Mm -hmm. You see, this rich man is also concerned about his brothers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For I have five brethren mm -hmm. that he may testify and that he is Lazarus. This man wouldn't even give to Lazarus the time of day when he was alive. Now he was asking Abraham to allow Lazarus to go to his brothers. Mm -hmm. It says that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. What I'm trying to say, my brothers and sisters, on this side of the grave, you better get right with God. Amen. And if you know people who are not right with God, that are family and friends, yes. you need to go tell them yes. about the goodness of Jesus. Yes. Because when they die, it's going to be far too late. Yes. You know, some people believe you can pray people in the he into heaven, but let me tell you, once you are dead, you are dead. Yes. And if you die without Jesus... Yes. It's not only sad, but you're going to burn in the lake of fire forever. Amen. And let me say, while he was alive, this rich man, we do not know what kind of relationship this man had with his five brothers. Mm -hmm. He might have loved them and he might have shared his wealth with them. Mm -hmm. But I'm almost certain that he never gave a moment's thought to where they would spend Amen. eternity. Amen. So why would he, if so, and, and to prove that, I should say, that's why he wants Lazarus to go testify unto his brothers. Now, he is in hell, and he knows they are just like him. That's why he wants Lazarus to go. Mm -hmm. He knows that where he is, his brothers will soon be as well. Mm -hmm. Now, he is concerned for his brothers, but it's too late. Mm -hmm. Now, allow me to say, we must reach the lost led astray and the bamboozle mm. while there is time. Yes. All right, all right. We must reach the people who believe there's more than one way. Right. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you, we need to tell them there's only one way. Right. Despite what the world say, despite what the billionaires right. say, despite what the worldly says, right. there's only one way to the Father right. and only one way to heaven, and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 See, we need to open our mouths and share Jesus with the lost and dying generation. Amen. We must do what we are called to do in the Gospels and go and tell this world about a Savior who loves them, Amen. who died for them, Amen. and who will save them if they will trust him by faith. Amen. They need to come to Jesus right now. Right now. Yes. Because there's a place called hell Amen. that is waiting on them Amen. when they leave this world. Amen. And let me say, I pray that our children, mm -hmm. our grandchildren, Amen. and family members who do not know Jesus Christ come to know him as their bright and morning star, Amen. their lily in the valley, Amen. and their way, their truth, Amen. and their life. Yes. Yes. We need to make every effort to see that they do not die without Jesus. Yes. So he is a conscious man. He is a concerned man. And third, he is a convinced man. And let me say, probably within seconds after death, this rich man was convinced of some things that might have been cloudy to his mind Already. before he died. Already. Because what it tells what it tells us as Christians, it says it tells us to be absent from the bodies to be present with the Lord. Yeah. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it talks about how in the moment in the trick of an eye, we all yeah. gonna be changed. Right. Imagine somebody going to hell. Mm -hmm. In a right. moment in the trick of an eye, you're gonna be in hell. That's right. Come on, somebody. That's right. It worked both ways. It, it, these people are going to know that they are in hell. Yes. Amen, somebody. Just like this rich man. And many see this passage as merely another story mm -hmm. or a parable from Jesus. Mm -hmm. But Jesus never called, and you can research it for yourself. Amen. Right now. But Jesus never called anyone by name in a parable. Amen. Here he called Lazarus by his name. Yes. 
And in verse 23, it is clear that hell is real. Yes, it is. In this text, there are no philosophical debates <laughs> raging within the heart of this man. That's what smart people want to do. They want to debate you. They want to get all in your head. But, but like I said, let the word of God be true in every man of life. Now, he is thoroughly convinced that hell is an absolute reality. And this man knows for sure that hell is not the grave. He dies and is buried in verse 22. Right. And immediately he finds himself in the flames of hell in verse 23. All right, yeah. This man knows that hell does not spell the end of man's existence as many groups mm. teach. Mm -hmm. right. He knows for sure that man does not merely burn up like a broom sage field. All right. He knows that the soul lives on in hell and when it dies, and when it dies in unbelief. This man now has no doubts that God will allow man to follow his unbelief all the way to heaven. Amen. Amen. God gives each and every one of us free will. Amen. And you can choose what you want to do this day. Amen. You can choose to follow God or you can choose to follow the word. Amen. Now some people say that hell cannot possibly be real. <laughs> Since a loving God will not allow man to go there. But God loves the sinner so much that he will allow him to go to hell if that is what the sinner chooses to do. Come on, somebody. The fact that there is a hell does not change the fact of God's love for the lost because remember, God so loved the world. But God gives us all free will. And we can choose to be on the Lord's side or we can choose to be on the world's side. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, the Bible didn't, you know, God didn't talk about, Jesus didn't talk about in the New Testament about homosexuality, same-sex marriage, and things of those natures. But it's right there in Romans 3. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Jesus don't have to repeat himself on Amen. something he already talked. Right Come on, somebody. What I'm trying to say is, if you don't change your life, I don't care if you're homosexual, I don't care if you're a liar, gossip or thief or whatever yes, the case may yes. be. If you don't change your life and come to faith in Jesus yes. Christ, your destination is hell. Yes. But at the same time, know this, it ain't no sin too great that God will not forgive you for yes. come to faith in Jesus. Because yes. God so loved the world. Yes. Not just Christians, but yes. sinners as well. Right. Because we were all sinners yes. before we came to faith in Christ. Yes. Yes. And let me say, hell is not purgatory. Mm -hmm. Some people teach that. Mm -hmm. Because the interview with this rich man shows, show, because the interview with this rich man shows, he is convinced that he will remain where he is forever. Mm -hmm. He asked that Lazarus, not himself, be sent to witness to his brother. All right. mm -hmm. He knows that he will never be permitted to leave the torment and flames of hell. And to back that up, you can go to Revelation chapter 14, verse 11, Matthew chapter 25, verse 41, and Mark chapter 9, verses 43 through 48. All right now. Some teach that you can be prayed out of hell, but I will say again, let God be true in every man alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hell is a real place, and if you die without Christ, it will be too late. All right now. So he's a conscious man, he is a concerned man, he is a convinced man, and my final point is, he is a condemned man. Mm -hmm. No more chances. You know how we always sing, God is a God of a second chance, yes. second chance, second chance, second chance. Yeah. When you go to hell, he ain't going to be no God of a second chance. Because mm -hmm. it's going to be too late, and there will be no more chances. Mm -hmm. While we live, while he lived, the rich man had the same opportunities that Lazarus had. Amen. They both had the testimony of the law of God, like we also have the 66 books. Mm -hmm. They both have the revelation of God in creation. We see God's glory every day we wake up. Amen. They, bought, they, they both had light, mm -hmm. and they both had a choice to make, and apparently Lazarus mm -hmm. chose to place his faith in God. Mm -hmm. While the rich man embraced unbelief and placed his trust in and riches, power, and self, because that rich man chose sin over the Savior, mm -hmm. he is in hell, and he is in a place where God would never call him again. Yes. Right. 
He will never hear another gospel sermon. Amen. He will never hear another gospel song. Mm -hmm. He will never again will be invited to come to church. Yes. Mm -hmm. He is forever separated from everything that has to do with God. Mm -hmm. And he has made his choice and his day of opportunity has passed forever. Right. Uh -huh. And let me say, if that is the path you choose, mm -hmm. then God will allow you to follow that path all the way into the flames of hell. Yes. Just as there will never be another opportunity for this rich man to be saved, there will never be a change in his experience of torment either. That's right. Now, there will be a change in the location of those in hell. Amen. But right now, the souls in hell are in a place of torment, oh, right. probably in the heart of the earth. Amen. And at some point in the future, they will be called out of hell and they will stand before the great white throne judgment to be judged. Amen. And after they are judged, they will be sent away into the lake of fire, which is the second day. Amen. Their address will be altered, but their state of mind will not be altered. Right they will know what's going on. They'll feel everything that's happening in that fire. Yes. They will still be lost. They will still be separated from God. And they will still be in eternal torment. Amen. Never a change in punishment and never a change in feeling oh, the right. punishment. Amen. That is bad news, my brothers and sisters, Amen. for those who have not received Jesus Amen. as Lord and Savior. Amen. But there is hope. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Somebody yeah. say hope. Oh. There is hope yeah. and there is good news right. because there is still room yeah. at the Lord's table yeah. for those who come to faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. You see, my Lord, my Savior, my Master, my everything oh, yeah. wants to share and bless those of you who have not come to faith in everything, Amen. come to faith in Him with everything He has yeah. spread across His table. Right now. And what you will find at his table, All right, now. what you will find in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. right. which is the special of today. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and that now. special is yeah. salvation. Yeah. Right. And it comes with a side of healing right. from your pain, yeah. a side of joy yeah. in your sorrow, yeah. a side of power in your weakness, right, a double portion of grace and mercy, yeah. and a triple yeah. portion yeah. of peace, yeah. forgiveness, and love. Yeah. And the Lord yeah. Where there is still room, yeah. you can get filled, your field of everything you need yeah. in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah. At the table is comfort. Yeah. At the table is satisfaction. Yeah. It's here at the Lord's table. Come on now. Come on at now. the table is rest. Yeah. It's all here at the Lord's table. Yes, Lord. So go and tell somebody yeah. Yeah. the broken, bruised, and birth. The disobedient, weak, yeah. and reckless, the damaged, depressed, and dogged out. Yeah. Go and tell somebody. Yeah. Yeah. The sick, suffering, and sinner, the angels afflicted and worried, the tempted, tried, and tortured. Okay. Go and tell somebody. Come yeah. on, y'all. Go and tell somebody. The lost, the lame, and the least, yeah. the outcast, overlooked, and overtaken. Yeah. The right. poor, persecuted, and led astray. Yeah. Go and tell them yeah. that yeah. you're just a beggar trying yeah. to tell them. What a good thing. Okay. And his name is Jesus yeah. Christ. You need to know he is the way out. They need to know there is no sin too great that he will not forgive them for. Yeah. They need to know that he loves them so much yeah. that he will take them just as they are. Yes. Yes. Behold, yes. I stand at the door and knock. Yes. If any man hear my voice yes. and open the door, yes. I will come to him. Yes. And we'll sup with him, yes, and he with me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. You got to know, my brothers yes, and sisters, yes. what God has called you to do. Amen. There's a lost world out there yes, Lord. that don't know Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's a lost world, I was yes. talking to the sister Linda earlier, yes, in Afghanistan that don't know Jesus. Yes. But you got people on that mission field out there risking their life yes, to introduce Lord. them to Jesus. Yes. We're in the United States where there's no danger, nobody cutting our heads off. But we're afraid to tell our neighbor about the goodness of Jesus. So let's get off our blessed assurance. Get outside these four walls and tell the lost, dying world, and that include family and friends, that there is a reality in serving Jesus Christ. And the reality is that if you come to faith in him, you will bypass hell. 
If you come to faith in him, he will bless you with all the things that you need Amen. and all the things that you don't need, to be honest with you. Right. But when you come to faith in Jesus Christ, yeah. and Pastor Emeritus talked about this earlier, we don't care what's going on in the world because our peace is found in Jesus. Yeah. People are losing their mind over this coronavirus. They're losing their minds who's sitting in the White House. They're losing their mind on the economy. But me and my household, yeah. we're going to put our faith in Jesus Christ. And that's where my peace comes from. A peace that surpasses all understanding. And that's what we must do. Because we have a work to do because time is running out. People need to know Jesus is real. Oh, great God Almighty, Jesus is real, young people. And if you have never been saved, let me speak to you as clearly as I can for just a moment. Please do not join this rich man in hell. Mm -hmm. God loves you and he sent his son Jesus to die for you on the cross. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ died for you and he loves you today just like you are. Yes. I have no doubt that he's calling you to come to him if you have not received him. Mm -hmm. If you will come to him, he will save you and you will miss hell. Mm -hmm. Don't let Satan play you for a fool. All right. You only know everybody plays a fool sometimes. Come to Christ while there is time. Yeah. Just acknowledge and understand mm -hmm. that you are a sinner in need of saving. Right. That's the first thing you got to do. You got to know that you're a sinner. All right. And Jesus is the only way to save you. Understand that God loves you and that Jesus died for you and rose again from the dead Amen. so that you might have life. Amen. Place your faith in him and him alone. Yes. For your salvation. Yes. Understand that you can do that very thing right now. Mm. Because if you haven't done it right now, it's past time. All, right. All you have to do is get up, come to God, mm. confess with your mouth, and know in your total being. Amen. And if you are saved and want to thank God for saving you, right. give us some praise right now. <laughs> hell and you want to commit to telling the laws about him, you can come before him to worship and present your body as a living sacrifice right now. Mm -hmm. All you have to say, Lord, use me for your purpose, your will only, and God will use you. If you're saved but your life is not what it ought to be, you can come before the Lord today and you can find forgiveness yes. and restoration in Jesus. Yes. And let me say, Jesus is the only one that can restore yes. us. Yeah. Jesus is the only one that can change us. Yes. Jesus is the only one that can cleanse yes. us. Yes. So that your life can be a life with Jesus and not a testimony against him. Right. The doors of the church are open. Amen. Amen. know God is the only way. Yes. If you know he's the only way to salvation, he's the only way to the Father. Yes. Put your hands together and give him some praise. Yes. Amen. I want you to encourage our little ones right here. Amen. Our little sister Kimberly wanted to, Kimberly Chacon wanted to sing her song. Amen. 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 And we're going to let her sing this song along with her siblings, baby girl, and angel. Amen. 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 If I can, can I get everyone to sing?